Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on shanshan.co. Today, we're going to react to Lori Mirabelli. So I think I'm actually friends with her on Facebook, but so <laughs> maybe I'm a little jaded or maybe I'll be a little more skewed. So looking at her YouTube channel, she has kind of a some splash of paint, a couple of clips from different, I think clips from her YouTube channel, which is good. It's interesting. She kind of position is kind of all over the place. I think I would go with a background of a painting in the background besides this kind of generic um, splatter paint, but it does stand out. So kind of hard to determine what she has. She has her links, uh, Instagram, and I think maybe her website and Facebook for her logo. She has kind of a picture of her full body. I think I would just go with the face because it's kind of hard to make out who that is. It's um, I think it just the face is much stronger there for this because when you go in comments, it's really like this small, so there's no way you're going to figure out who that is, probably. So on her Facebook, she has a business side of selling art, which is really cool. So she's helping artists directly, so that's kind of a cool focus. Then she has abstract painting with her, Lori. Upload, so there's just her whole feed. And that's it. She does, I think she has playlists, let's see. So she could probably do more playlists and organize the front page a little more, a couple more rows if she wanted to. Uh, let's get into the video. So the first video is, I quit my job and became a full-time abstract painter, artist. There has been one question that has really been consistent, whether it's been on my Instagram or my Facebook or on my YouTube platform now, people have been asking me, how is it that I am selling so much artwork? especially at a time during a pandemic. So I like her interview. She gets straight to it. She's straight headshot on. You got a background of one of her paintings in the back. Well, two of her paintings in the background, plus a little bit of her studio shots. I think it's a good start to the beginning. Today is going to be about me trying to unpack that a little bit and put it into some perspective. I'm going to skip ahead. I mean, hopefully I don't miss stuff, but... What? <laughs> so... I did. That's exactly what I did. I took some art courses. I took uh, design, totally did not do well in that. Um, drawing, painting one, painting two. Okay, so you get kind of a your general classwork. Let's skip ahead a little bit. In the room. And then we had to overlay with paint. And I had never really done that before. I had played around with watercolors, but we were using acrylics. I had never touched acrylic paint. Um, this was my very first experiment in trying to uh, do some washes, like Brazil style of painting. So I think she's kind of slowly building up kind of how she got to be an artist. Let's skip ahead a little bit more. Comfortable and homey and, and quaint. It wasn't saturated. The quality of things that people were making on there, I thought were authentic and relatable so and the minimal risk too. 20 cents to list a painting your listing would stay for for 30 60 90 days <laughs> I can't even remember it was so long ago and so yeah, anyway, before deal. I listed my painting what I did was I switched to abstract and I really kind of thought about you know throughout all the years that I had done art drawings really was really my thing I love to sketch um, I don't unfortunately I don't have any of my pen drawings but I do have a couple of pencil so skip ahead a little bit decided that I was gonna take the plunge to list onto Etsy and let me tell you I didn't take that lightly okay so she's talking about Etsy let's skip ahead a little bit more and right from day one first was to solidify my work to make sure that I was creating a cohesive body of work. So that makes it one of the easiest ways to market. If you narrow down to one style, you can definitely, the marketing is way easier. You associate with similar artists and you kind of, it makes it easier for like Facebook ads. And also for the audience, they don't really think you can do abstract and realist for some reason. <laughs> Like I do both and I'm like, yeah, my realism is as good as my abstract, but I'm like, why not do it? But it is smarter from a marketing perspective just to do one style. My second part of my business plan was I was a nobody. Nobody knew my work. I had no letters behind my name. I was not a fine art student. I was not a fine art major. I had no degree, no college education. This is kind of wordy. So let's see here. All right, let's skip to here. I'm going to say to you is that you need a website. You need That's a true. website. The first thing I'm going to say 100%. to you is you need a website. 100%. And on that website, it's going to really be important for you to have your biography, your curriculum vitae, and your artist statement. 
And I'm thinking, do I have those things on my website? I think my, I I think my CV is gone from there, but I, at some point I'll put it back up. With your website, you're going to have to pick <laughs> That's a, a gallery thing. name. Let's skip ahead a little bit more. Buying it, one of those keywords and, and put it together with your own name. Your website domain name now has a searchable keyword in it, which is golden. <laughs> and I don't have that. So that is a huge important tip for you. Uh, so make sure when, if you're still new to it and you have time to change it, I would change it now. Yeah, it makes it easier if you're, like mine is just shanshan.co, it's okay, but you don't know what it's about. It's much better to do like shanshanart.com or for her, Lori, I can't remember her name right now. <laughs> Lori, blah, 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 or, or abstract artist or something. So it's just easier to understand right off the bat. If you just put your name until you're branded and people are known, they won't know what the hell that's about. So they'll be like, well, I don't know what that website's about. But if you add art in there or painting in there, it's going to make it a much stronger website. Let's just skip ahead here. Sorry, it's still a long video, so I'm just cutting up little pieces. That I was going to switch over from Wix to Shopify. I knew that I wanted to continue selling online as part of my practice. I have no idea why you would switch. Shopify is a better business, but I don't know why Wix would have issues. Because I had started selling online. It's it's what I knew and and what I had done for years and I wanted to be able to continue that. And so I did my research this time and I took my All domain name that's not paired with a keyword and I migrated over to Shopify. Third thing that, that I one. did is... Oh no, there's a whole bunch. Okay, I have my fly trap set. <laughs> Florida, there's like bugs all over the place, but I got tape everywhere, I'll probably catch most of them. To be a part. And so I thought of all times for me to take photos of myself and post them on Instagram so that I can almost be Come there. On. All right, so let's get here. Is that another one? Jesus Christ, they're just popping up everywhere. Or five. And also I, you know, I'm not painting every day a new painting. It's just not possible for me to do. I'm, you know, I can paint, but I can't paint that much. You have to be creative and 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 coming up with different ideas to post because if you're not painting a new painting every day, then what what do you what are you gonna post twice a day? What do you have to post twice a day? If you're trying to be a professional artist, all right, let's get to the next video. These flies are super distracting. <laughs> Florida dude I don't know why I moved here creating layers in abstract paintings learning about value part two all right so this is going to be actually her painting video so let's check it out hi everyone Thanks. I'm Lori Lots Mirabelli abstract artist I used to say from Toronto Ontario but I have recently relocated which is why I have been absent from my YouTube channel for the last few weeks so my sincerest apologies to everyone who is a subscriber on my channel wondering where I've been while well, I have been packing up my studio myself my cat <laughs> um, and I have moved about four hours okay let's skip that part by flat I just mean I'm simply just gonna apply color in one layer. I would do layer. the same, but I add gloss, you get way better so uh, spreadability. So that you see the difference. So that's one technique. Place scraping into wet canvas. It allows the gesso canvas underneath to show through. And then the other thing, that was simply just water. Okay, so she got water drips going on. Let's see what else she's got. I have my little mesomizer, which is a bowl scraper. It's silicone. It's soft, but it has um. I would get a, a way bigger scraper. I got on ones the inside, this big. and I'm out of focus. And you can get ones with handles, so that cement draws are way better. It has a piece of metal on the on inside. All right, let's skip that. This is kind of fun. You had like line in there. A lot of female this artists like to do this with the kind of really painting. organic. <laughs> but. I'm rather enjoying myself. Of course, you're going to paint, and you're going to you paint, right? You really just have to let... Let's skip ahead a little bit. ...using one color. So it's the same idea as what we did last time. The black and white composition. You weren't distracted by anything. So now I'm just going in here, as you can see, I'm cleaning up. And it's kind of cool she's shooting like right over the shoulder, so you get the head in there, which is kind of nice. It's a I really nice... leave some of the marks in there. Distance from the camera and the, the painting. I think they're the setup's nice. Skip ahead a little bit. With magenta. If that helps you to think in terms of how to play with value. 
and make your composition interesting. Remember, you want your eye to keep moving around that canvas. I'm gonna say again, the reason for this exercise is for you not to recreate. Right, let's skip ahead a little bit. Add some more lines. So it's just layering and layering and layering. That's the really key to a good abstract is just constantly kind of play with it, be loose. Don't be attached with too many ideas. My tape is working, I'm catching some flies. Mark making. Oh man, it's depressing. It must be 20 flies in here. <laughs> like you don't see them, and then all of a sudden at night you turn on one light like this and you just catch them all. All right, so let's skip ahead a little bit. There, I, I'll i take. Um, it's a nice gritty feel to this closer. with the line and then paint and then cover it up. And then it's, um, it's kind of very childlike, okay. but very fun. So let's go to the next video. This is how to price art to sell and start your art career. So this is one of the key things as an artist, it's very hard to price because you can price too high and then you're kind of screwed because you're overly priced and then you price too low and then people aren't buying. So it's just, I just find it a nuisance. I would love to just start at a low price and sell it all, but. Welcome back. I have been getting a ton of questions about how you guys can learn how to start pricing your artwork. I know that this is a really complicated equation or factor so she again she starts off with a nice headshot her paintings in the background so a very good start to the video to consider when trying to become a full-time artist or even just a hobbyist artist there are lots of things to consider and i by all means am not the expert in this field but i have taken some time to research on the internet kind of guess I had a little bit here um okay so when I first started out selling my art I did my research again I always do that and and I hope that you realize that there's a consistency to what I do is every time I'm diving into the internet and want to move my career forward I Got do some part. research I do some research first I doing videos that are from a negative perspective um, I just, I, I always like to think of things in the positive way, but I wanted to explain to you why I use the square inch method. It's a very classic formula. There's, um, there's three ones I know of off the top of my head, square inch, which he's talking about, which is 10 inches by 10 inches times say 0.5 and you get $50, right? Or 10 inches by 10 inches times a dollar, you get a hundred dollars. Another way you can do it is length plus width times the price. So say it's 10 by 20 so that's 30 and then times your price a dollar you get 300 so it's kind of that goes more of a gradual grease square inch will go to a perfectly 45 degree angle and then you can also price by time hours and whatever and that's kind of a little more complicated but this is a nice great basic abstract art pricing is price per square inch formula to price my art so skip ahead know what i'm talking about so i would have to keep track of all the things that I do throughout the day. Okay, you know, that was two hours of work here or that was an hour of work here. Especially when you're working in your studio, there, there are things that just distract us. So I think she's talking about pricing by time and materials, which you can do. You definitely want to include that. You don't want to underprice your time. If it took you 20 hours, you definitely want to have, what's 20 hours with your time? At least 200, maybe a thousand, I don't know. But um, it also has to be quality. So to me, it's like you have to get the quality first before you can really start increasing your pricing used bottle i actually buy my liquitex varnish this is great varnish i use it as well in a gallon as well and then i buy the biggest bottles of paint that i can find yeah this will save you a lot of money if you start getting really good you definitely want to just scale up to these larger sizes i bought the gel the size like her titanium white that's 60 dollars. but if you get a little tiny one it's i want to say it's like 18 so you can really get to that 60 dollars with literally like one third the material so it's once you start using materials and you're confident you're selling, definitely scale up. Inch. I'm gonna do a little bit of an equation for you online, uh, a screenshot of that so that you can understand what I'm talking about. So let's do that now. Square inch method for you. Okay, I just explained that, so we'll skip that. But it's good she did that with the math there. Able to move any of my paintings if I attach the price tag that I have now back then. So there are facts, some of the factors that you need to consider on how you gauge your price work is based on how long has it been since you started? Um, have you done any shows? Do you have a website? What's your online social media presence like? And do you have a following? Those are some real important factors. So if you have like a similar artwork, maybe you paint the same quality as Lori, but then you're starting from zero, you're not gonna be able to price the same 
because she's already established kind of the social media presence, a YouTube channel, a website, blah, blah, blah. And so her social weighting is much higher and she's going to have more fan base natively. So maybe she's charging $2 an hour or $2 a square inch. You might only be able to charge 50 cents. So you got to kind of weight that, get someone that's equal in your thing, but then also see someone that equal, like how many social media followers, Facebook fans, Instagram followers, YouTube channel. So if you weight those back, then you can get to a good solid price per square inch. They just want something for their home to decorate their walls. Whatever the reason is, you want to make sure you position yourself in that pocket that that buyer is more likely going to press click and purchase your artwork, right? The other factor that I think you need to consider is you want to price your work to sell, right? That, I mean, the ultimate goal, 100%. usually, uh, if you are a business person and an artist, you ha those have to go hand in hand. You can't just be an artist. If you're just an artist, it's going to be really, really hard to sell your work. And I know there's going to be a bunch of artists out there who are going to hate that statement, but there is a business component to being an artist. And I yeah. want you guys to understand that you need to price your artwork so that it can sell. That's the whole, you don't want, uh, a whole storage unit of four hundred dollar paint or not four hundred dollar paintings of four hundred paintings. I mean, at, maybe at some point they'll become valuable, but that's usually when you die. Uh, so you want to try and make some money while you're still a living artist. And and for that reason, if you are just starting out, you should be pricing your artwork accordingly. And as it starts to sell and you're finding that you can't keep up with the demand because this is part of business, supply and demand. And if your artwork is selling faster than you can create it, then that means you need to up your artwork. Yeah, it's just basic supply and demand. So get that right. I, I haven't figured out the right selling price either. So I'm trying to figure out like low price, high price. I've done low price, I've done higher prices. But once you get that ground, I think it's really, you know, great, a really great set of body of work. And then you can really worry about selling because if your work isn't good, you're not going to sell it well. So you might as well get really good at the style you like. And then once that, you can start at a lower price. And then, you know, if you got high demand, definitely increase your prices. I see that all the time with artists that they're completely sold out on their website. And you're like, why aren't you increasing your prices? You're obviously selling through too fast. And if you don't have any inventory, it's kind of like you're screwing your other future clients because then they have to wait which can be good if they don't mind waiting a little bit, but you could lose customers that way too. It's a simple formula. There is no formula. Supply, demand, paint some, sell some. Sell too many, can't paint enough, raise your prices. And I don't mean like go from a $100 painting to a $10,000 painting. Small incremental increases work better. So that's pretty solid. There's a lot, I would actually go rewatch this whole video because I'm kind of skipping around a little bit but only to keep this video short. Uh, so let's go to her website. So I think it's called lorimirabelli.com. So that's good, it's just her name. But obviously I think she talked about earlier in the video, lorimirabelli.art would have been in or abstract art or whatever. I should change mine as well to Sean Sean Art. But it's, you know, you start with your name, you start with your name. It's fine once you get branded. So her first page is kind of a stay into the email list that pops up. And then she has kind of a price to shop. So I don't know if you'd have double pop-up windows, maybe just one pop-up window, like the newsletter, obviously. Smaller too, I think it's a little bigger. I, she's got a nice picture of herself with her abstract paintings around her. So that's really solid because you know you've landed on the artist website versus a gallery website. If you just do it generically, only your art, it might look like a gallery website. So people might be a little confused. Oh, is it a gallery site? Is it an artist website? So you definitely want to include yourself in those photos to give it that real authentic bond with the art. So she immediately talks about kind of herself, where she lives, um, kind of like a little summary of her art statement. And these are some of the art galleries that represent her. So that's really cool. She's already getting to multiple galleries. So that's super strong. And then she's broken up her work into large painting, medium work, small work, on sale, sold paintings. I don't include sold paintings, but some people like it. It's kind of proof of purchase. So it kind of proves that you actually are selling your painting. So... I'm kind of on the fence. I don't really put up my sold work on my website, but I do mention how many I've sold. So, and then she has kind of an on sale. So I do this as well. I do multiple styles. So I do the styles and I also do one by size and I also do one by color. So I think you can kind of really dive into there, but just having your large, medium, small is a great way to do it because most people are looking by size first. And then, you know, if they like your work, they'll get to your website and then their next step might be the size. So that might be cool. So let's go to one of these. 
So she's saying it's extremely busy. So she probably needs to increase her prices as well if she if she can't keep up. So she has like three, four, six, nine, twelve. So not too many paintings actually. She only has a few. Which is a good sign. She's actually selling these through. She has a couple sold outs. I think I would leave like one or two solds and then kind of as they sell, like if they're a month or two out, I would just get rid of them um, and just keep one or two. But it's just a personal preference. You having a few sold, actually sold, they actually sell through. She has art shows. It's kind of cool. She has one of her kind of her presentations, upcoming, mostly in galleries now, but I think probably before she probably did other stuff. And she has art installations, I guess, too. She used to do installations, but not so much now. But this is really cool because this is right inside a inside houses. So you want to have guest shots. If you can get people inside their house with actual work, it shows you how strong the work looks on site. So that's a really classic way to do it. I guess some of these are working with interior designers because that's really strong if you're an abstract painter. Interior designers love abstract art because it's there's no political message. You don't have to worry about any controversial, but you can have that really strong art punch. And it really jazzes up a nice um, interior design. So yeah, I think she has a pretty solid, really simple website. There's not a blog, which I'm surprised because blog really drives SEO. If you have a blog, you add that and then you have some articles in there. Maybe you have 10, 20 articles. You don't have to do much, but all those links will kind of from outside websites to your website. The more you do that, the more you rise up the ranking of sales. So that's one of the tricks. Having a couple written articles. I just do mostly video nowadays, but probably ideally you should do both. I've done both in the past, but... I just switched the video. I think it was easier. Like I just do this video and upload it on my website, right? <laughs> but if you're smarter, you'd actually do a written version as well. But yeah, I think it's, she has a pretty good website and a nice channel where she has a lot of good advice for artists, which is really cool. You meet really meet to the artist and kind of establish your credibility of helping other artists. It's really cool. I do the same on my website. So yeah, I recommend Lori. I think she's a great artist, good abstract style as well. If you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next Artist React video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully I kill these flies. <laughs>